deserves credit for enduring torture, but he does not give credit for what he did in, in Vietnam. He was part of the American aggressive force of bombing, bombing peasants in Vietnam. Uh, that's not heroism, you know. Uh, so yeah, we are going, yeah, I, the protests of Vietnam veterans and, and soldiers were perhaps a crucial, crucial element in getting the United States to realize it could not continue that war. And that kind of civil disobedience is needed today. Keep in mind, the people who have the power and very often you're so daunted by the people in government who have the power. They have that power only because everybody else obeys. When people stop obeying, their power disappears. When soldiers start disobeying, the power to carry on war disappears. Just as when workers stop obeying, the power of a great corporation disappears. When consumers boycott a product, the people the manufacturers make that product are helpless. People have power. If they organize, if they act, uh, sometimes within the law and sometimes without the law in acts of civil disobedience. But people have to know they have that power. Uh, and it will take that to stop the war and to make our country a different kind of country, a peace-loving country, a country that uses its wealth not for war, but for health and education and, you know, take care of people, that's what it needs. No. Uh, and in order for that to happen, all of us have to start doing something, anything. Little things, doesn't, you don't have to do heroic things. There's some people who will do heroic things. You t little things, then the little things add up. That's how social movements develop. People do something small. Somebody else does something small. Somebody else does something small. You get a million small acts and they merge at some points in history into a great force that brings about change. Thank you. Thank you. We do have a, a brief time here for uh, question and answers. Anybody who has a question? Yeah, let's uh, let's do about 15 or 20 minutes. 15 it is. Yeah, I, 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 I could spend hours answering questions, <laughs> and I have in the past, but I, frankly, I've got to catch a plane. I'm anxious to get home. Okay. You're home. I'm not. <laughs> so if, if there are a few people out here who have questions, we will please, please, please keep your questions brief. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Zinn. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for coming. My question is this. Um, I once heard a speaker last year at the uh, Bioneers Conference uh, from which you can hear the, the Bioneers program on KGNU. It's the independent media station at 1390 AM. I heard a speaker say at that conference, the opposite of war is not peace, but community. And so what I would like to do is to, to ask, what's the importance of independence in media to create that community? Well, the, import, well for the importance of media, right? I mean, so much of the lies of, of government are mediated <laughs> through the media, right? The, the Times and the Wall Street Journal and Time Magazine and Newsweek, they, and CBS and NBC, they uh, f filter the government uh, what the government says and we get it from them. And so we need independent media to begin telling us truth and, and to give us information and analysis that we can't get ordinarily. And fortunately, and that's very important, fortunately we have independent media in this country. We have an example of it here. Uh, somebody's recording this for democracy now. Somebody's recording this for free speech, right? Speech, free speech television. Somebody's recording this for uh, David Barsamian is recording this for alternative radio. At least that's what he tells me. You never know. <laughs> you never know what people are doing with their recordings. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> but independent media, <clears throat> excuse me, enormously important because, the, you know, people have to create their own means of communication 
with one another in order to strengthen themselves and, yes, to build community. Thank you. Um, I have a question from the community standpoint. You said social movement is what is needed in this country from a really grassroots level, you know, not getting it through the media in a, in a majority sense, not being patriotic if you're standing out against what you're saying. How do we start this, much like the civil rights movement of the 60s, to this generation taking back control of our government in a sense that we don't believe everything that we hear, that we don't buy into the buying of everything, selling of everything, getting caught up in a consumerism type industry without really understanding what our general purpose is on the lower levels of grassroots. How do we start in a specific way on grassroots level to start taking back some of this power? How do you start? That's right. Everybody starts in their own way in a different place and and uh, you start where you are, you know. <clears throat> you can't start by some ab abstract notion of where you start. <clears throat> have to look around you and what you're experiencing here. And if you, there's something happening in your community, if something is happening to the water in your community, is something happening to the land in your community, is something is, uh, it, well, you, uh, you look around and see who's working on it or who's not working on it and try to do something about it. If, uh, if in your community people are losing their homes, you try to get together with other people and you ask, what can we do about this? Hey, maybe we ought to look back at Shays' Rebellion after the Revolutionary War when they were trying to take away the farms of people and the farmers gathered around the courthouses and wouldn't let them do it. Maybe we ought to look back at the Depression when uh, people being evicted from their homes and, uh, and, and their neighbors gathered around and moved the furniture back into the house. There are very specific things that are happening, and you've got to figure, what can I do? You know, start, it's, you know it's, how did the, the great m movement, civil rights of the 60s, start? A small act, right? 1955, right? A woman, black woman, refuses to sit in, in the back of the bus. So, 1960, a few students decide uh, that they, they're going to defy the, the segregation laws. And you have to decide what small thing you can do that would give, be in the direction of peace and justice. And when you do these small things, you have no idea what's going to happen. You have no idea if, if they will then develop into something large or if they will simply splutter out and die. But you keep doing these things and uh, maybe, maybe something will happen. But you have to look around you and, and see, you know, what there is around you that you can act upon uh, in a thousand different ways. Yes. Uh, thanks. Um, I know the focus today is on war primarily. Um, I'm curious though if you have any comment on the economy and maybe if you can place that in some historical economy. context some, and placing it in some his, historical context. Yeah. I, I, I can answer any question. <laughs> I am an expert on everything. Remember what I told you about experts? Beware. <clears throat> Actually, I do have something to say about the economy. Uh, <clears throat> well, of course, immediately, right, this 700 billion bailout. Really happy to see Democrats and Republicans congratulating one another, and getting together, bipartisan, brotherly love, and all of that, uh, both agreeing, both parties agreeing, I'm sorry to say this, Obama and McCain. And let me tell you, yeah, I favor Obama over McCain, but with trepidation uh, and, uh, and with a desire, you no, know, we better push this guy and really, I've got to, you know, got to tell him we, we want to turn his abstractions into something strong, you see, and see if he means what he says. But there would be these two parties getting together for $700 billion, which they're going to pour, well, they're going to give it to the Secretary of the Treasury, they're going to give it to the financial institutions. Uh, you know what this is? This is the trickle-down theory. Do you know what the trickle-down theory is? 
it's, it's a famous theory in economics. 